Welcome to the tutorial for Scale Pay. Let's hop straight into it. First, we want to make sure that our settings are set up properly and scale it weight. So we'll go to settings, advanced companies, double click on our company, double click the department that you wish to set scale up pay up on, go to credit card processing, and on the right side are your scale up pay settings. You scale up pay should be checked. Your merchant ID should be filled out. If it's blank, give us a call and we can get your merchant ID for you. This will be needed to authenticate with full Steam servers. Below that is a setting, allow authorize and capture later. This will allow you to authorize a specific amount on a credit card and capture it up to 21 days later. This can be helpful if a client comes in and wants their card charged at a later point in time. Enable duplicate protection will prevent a single card from being charged the same amount more than one time per day. This could be helpful if you're experiencing any kind of duplicate processing on full Steam servers. However, it can be problematic if you charge a flat fee and customers come in multiple times a day and pay the same amount. This will prevent the second time. So it's pretty situational on when you would want to use that. Processing fee. It's something that you can pass on to your customers. It can either be a percentage or flat fee attached to the order or invoice. The export account name is used for accounting integration via QuickBooks, Sage, whatever accounting software you may be using to group up your processing fees in that software. Once you have all of this set up, we can go ahead and start using scale pay. Now that we have our settings set up, we can go ahead and start charging cards. So here we'll input some data into our software and we'll set some weights here. So I'll give this a little bit bigger of a value and we'll want to make sure that we select card pay. This will trigger scale pay to open. So we'll go ahead and click finish. And we have three different options on our scale pay menu. We have swipe slash chip, card on file, or manual entry. First, we'll start with the swipe slash chip. So we'll go ahead and click this. And we'll select your device type. Now we currently support Ingenico and ID Tech devices, but currently I'm using ID Tech. So I'll go ahead and select this one here. And it automatically brings up my device here. So now that I have that selected as well, I'll click swipe. And we'll go ahead and swipe the card. And this brings us to our next page. Now the name on the card and the zip on the card are optional parameters. You don't have to enter these, but it can be nice to just have a little bit more robust of experience and save that kind of data. Below that are two options, process and authorize. Process will charge the card at this point in time. Authorize will authorize an amount on the card that you can capture that amount 21 days later or up to 21 days later. Um, so we'll go ahead and use process right now and we'll click submit. And this will bring us to our transaction details window. Now here you can see how the transaction went. So we have a response that says zero dash success. If you ever get anything other than zero dash success, that means there's probably an error on the card. You can give us a call and we can kind of direct you in the best way to handle whatever error you might be experiencing. The transaction ID will be listed here from full steam. The card number, the last four will be shown here as well. And if we had entered the name on the account, this would show as well. Now, if you do get anything other than zero dash success, this will say retry and you can go ahead and you can retry it or you can click the X to put the order on hold and move on. So since it went through, we'll go ahead and click continue and that should bring up our next order that we can enter in weights. So enter in some more data here. And we'll make sure that we select card pay and then we'll click finish again.
Now we'll add a card. Now we'll charge a card on file. So this is a card that has previously been entered into the system that we don't need to swipe or type in the card anymore. It's just saved to an object in our database. So we'll click card on file and we'll select the client contact and we'll select me and we'll select the credit card that we have on file for me. Now again, we have our two options, profit, process and authorize. And we'll go ahead and we'll process this again. Cool. So now that we have uh, that transaction going through, we get our results page and we have our transaction ID, our card number, our name on account, and the response. So we'll go ahead and we'll do our last payment method here, which is a manual entry. And then we'll change some weights here and we will select card pay. All right. So now that we have our swipe chip card on file, last but not least is the manual entry. We'll go ahead and click that. And this will bring up uh, actually a web browser in your application. And you'll go ahead and fill out the name on account and zip code. Now, while this wasn't mandatory on the swipe slash chip section of charging card, you will need this to run a manual entry for a card. So I'll go ahead and put this name on account and the zip code and I'll click submit. Okay. And this will bring up uh, basically to input the card number. So we'll go ahead and use a dummy card here and we'll click pay. All right. And we need to select some boats. So that's a boat, boat, boat. And we'll click finish. Cool. And this brings us to our transaction details again. So we have our transaction ID, the card number, name on the account, and the response. So here we'll click continue. And that wraps up all three different ways that you can use scale pay. Okay. If you want to add a card to file, there's three different ways you can do it. One is through the accounts. One is through projects. And one is when you're finishing an order and invoice. So let's go ahead and show the accounts one first. So on the account, we can open up customer test, go to contacts, and here we have two contacts. And we can store the card on either contact. So we'll open up Austin, we'll go to tokens, and we'll click add. We'll click add card to file. And then here, we wanna add a card to a client contact. We wanna select our client name, which is customer test. Then we want to select our client contact and then we want to choose either swipe or manual entry. I'll choose swipe because it's a little bit faster, but you can just type in a card if you get it over the phone or you don't have the card on hand. So I'll click swipe chip and I'll go ahead and swipe my card. Now I'll fill out the name on the card and the zip and click add card. Great. So it worked. So now we'll go back and you can add another one here or you can close out. And if we click find, we have two cards. Cool. So now let's try adding it on a project. So we open up projects, we'll open up this project and we'll select credit cards. And here we click add, brings up the same menu, add card to file. Instead of selecting client contact, we'll select project and we'll select the client that the customer is tied to. So we'll do customer test and this is project and then we'll go ahead and swipe the chip okay and now we need to enter the name and the zip and we'll click add card cool so the card added so we'll go back and we'll close out and we'll click find. So now we added a card to a project and a client contact. Now, if we go into our orders and we select card pay and give it some information here and click finish. Now we should see those cards on our client contact. So here we'll pick Austin and now we have our two cards here. And if we want to look at the project, we 
select our project. And here we have our two cards as well. Cool. Now, if you want to add a card during your transaction, so say you filled out the order and you can't find the card that you want on file, you can select it here. And we'll click, say you want to add it to the client contact again. You can go ahead and add it real quick. Swipe chip. Then we'll swipe a card. Okay. And we'll click add card. Great. So now that we have that card added, now it'll definitely be on file. And we can go in here and we can select that third card that we added. And cool. So now you can process that. So that way you don't have to go through the accounts or project editor if you're already finishing an order. And it'll be the same process with invoicing, which we'll touch on next. Okay, so now we'll take a look at how to charge a card on an invoice. It's very similar to the order section of this video. So if you haven't watched that, please go watch that because I'm not going to repeat some of the information just to keep the video a little bit shorter. But if you have, let's continue. So I'll open up this invoice and I'll click on this icon here next to the status. And this will open up the scale pay menu. Now here we have the same three options as we did on orders. So you can choose any of the three. So I'll go ahead and use card on file just so it's quicker. And we'll go ahead and click process on this. Great. And then we can click continue. Here it'll ask you to print a receipt. Um, normally your printer will be set here. I don't have one set up on my machine. So it's blank for me. So I'll go ahead and skip it. But if you do have one, you can just click print. Now we see our status is set to paid. The payment type is card. And we have our remarks section filled out here. Cool. So we just paid off one invoice. Now you'll see we have three unpaid invoices. If we want to pay all these invoices off in a collection, we can go up here and click on payments. We can click add and we'll go ahead and type in our customer here and we'll click card and now we'll select the invoices that we want here we have a date range that you can modify so we have february 1st to the 14th and i'll go ahead and select these three here we'll click ok and now we'll click ok here and this will bring up our scale pay window. And we can go ahead and do the same thing. Click the card on the client contact. Select the client contact. Select the credit card. And click process. And we'll click submit. Great. And that went through. It'll also ask you to print your receipt. I'll go ahead and click cancel. And then we'll list our payment here. Now if we open this up, we can see that we have an option to reprint the receipt and you have your information about the credit card transaction here. If we go back into our invoices window and we click find, you'll see that they all get marked as paid. So this way you don't have to create or go through each invoice and pay them off. You can pay them off as a collection. If a client comes in and wants to pay a lot off, right? Um, lastly, we need to check out how to capture an authorization and I'll go ahead and show you what that's like in the next step. Okay. So if you've authorized instead of processed an order or invoice, you can capture those authorizations in your payments window. We'll go ahead and open this up a little bit. And you'll see that we have a couple authorized here. So this is, if I double click this, this was an order that I just did. 3064, this order here. And you'll see that we have our authorization details. Down below this, it says capture, and it says days left to capture. And as the days pass, it will increment down. If an authorization gets below seven days, whenever you start the program, it will notify you, say, hey, you have some authorizations that need attention. 
And so this is a way to make sure you don't miss anything. Okay. So here, all you got to do to capture the, the transaction that you authorize is click this button. And this will bring up transaction details. And it says the transaction ID, the amount, the processing fee, the total, and the order. And we'll go ahead and click capture. And so now it says charge successful. So that means that we have just successfully captured that amount that we authorized. And we can click OK. And now the status goes to payment type card instead of authorized. And if we open this up, that information to captured is gone. You could print a receipt if you'd like. Alternatively, we can go here and double click on this invoice that was authorized as well. This is invoice 13. And we do the same process. Capture the transaction. We'll have the information here. And we can click capture. And now it's charged the card for the amount that you authorized. Great. So I'll go ahead and click exit. Okay. And now this gets set to card. And same bit here. You can print the receipt. And you should be good to go. And that's how you would capture an authorization if someone um, came in and wanted to pay a little bit later. All right, and that should wrap up most of Scale Pay. Uh, if you have any questions or need further explanations, definitely reach out to our support team and be on the lookout for new videos with more features regarding Scale Pay. Thanks. Have a great day.